Okay, hi everyone. Um, I'm Jamie Hammond and I am a reference and um, instruction librarian at Naruto Valley Community College in Waterbury, Connecticut. And I, um, I was very, very much honored this year to be awarded um, one of the Movers and Shakers Awards from Library Journal based on a project that I had done um, at our college um, renovating the space. And so what I wanted to talk about today was finding the inspiration and getting the tools to make some changes in the physical space in your library to make the library more workable. Okay. So um, <laughs> one of the first and hardest things I think anyone can do um, when they start to look at the space that they're using is to get rid of the preconceived notions they have about um, how how their library functions. So, you know, if you think about when you have, you know, your mom come visit you or you have someone who's never been to your library before come visit you, they see things that you might not see. Um, for example, you might walk in every day and you, you know, come in and you do your work and then someone else comes in and they see a giant no smoking sign in the middle of your library. And then that person says, hey, you know, do you have a problem with smoking in the library? And you think, no, who would smoke a cigarette in the middle of the library? But in fact, you have giant no smoking signs all over your library, um, taking up your most valuable space and making it look like you have a library where people might possibly light up cigarettes in the middle of it. So that's certainly not the kind of um, uh, image you want to be giving off to people. <laughs> Um, so, you know, that's certainly one of the most difficult things to do because, you know, you're used to seeing it. So you, there's a couple of ways you can, you can find out what those little problems are. Um, one is to just kind of try to take off those blinders and see it as if you're, you're, giving, you're going into the library for the first time. And if you can do that, some people can, can make that sort of visual leap to seeing a new space. Um, as if they'd never been that, there before, and go ahead and do that. If you can't, you know, invite a friend um, to come to the library and give them a tour and see what they see, or you know, take some photos and look at them sort of when you're outside of the library and and review those photographs um, as if you've never seen them before. I have two small children. I have a four and a half year old and a six year old, and I use them for um, <laughs> usability <laughs> testing. I I make. What are you doing? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh my God! I'm I'm actually tied up the in the. <laughs> <I've ever done. laughs> Sorry, so there's a lot of funny stuff going on over here. Um, so I use my kids basically. I say like, you know, if you were going to ask a question, where would you go? And then I write down what they say, or I have them look at the website and I say, if you were going to click somewhere, where would you click? And and they um, they tell me, and they're actually very good at it. So. So yay for kids. And take lots of notes. And that's really that's really one of the first ways you can see what's exactly going on. Um, JP also has no idea what's going on. <laughs> OK. Um, know what people are asking you. If every single person who comes in the library asks you where the photocopier is, you need to move the photocopier or make a bigger sign or do something that's going to make that photocopier more obvious. So. Um, we had a problem with students studying in groups in our library in what was supposed to be the quiet study space. And, um, you know, we made a lot of signs that said this is quiet study space, you know, don't study in groups here, but the students were not reading them. They were sitting in groups. And so we realized that the furniture was um, set up for groups. It was in a big table with a lot of chairs around it, and so a student would walk into the space and say, hey, that looks like a space where me and my group could study, and so they would sit there. And um, that furniture placement really overrode any signs that we could have possibly made to tell what the space was used for. So that was a way that we were able to um, overcome that. Okay. So hopefully you have a list of things that need some help. Um, you know, people checking out things at the wrong desk, or people are sitting in the you know space doing things that you're not intending them to do, or they're wandering into your staff areas. That's a big one. Um, and you have basically two options. You can either make that space work for them, or you can try to change that space so that they are using it in a different way. <coughs> I don't know what time I'm supposed to finish. OK. All right, so um, I'm, I, uh, the next step would really be to get some inspiration on how you're going to do those things, how you're going to make those changes. 
I um, happen to be a very visual person. Um, my Google reader is maybe 30% library blogs, 20% funny things like hyperbole and a half, and the other 50% is um, visual de design blogs. Basically, um, designers, you know, I um, interior design, space design, things like that. And I really like to review them for ideas. A lot of times you'll find things that, um, that you'll really speak to the library but are not intended for library use in any way. Like I read a lot of the mommy designer blogs and um, they had just pages of amazing children's bookshelves that were made out of rain gutters, they were made out of all kinds of really cool stuff, found objects, and they were not intended for libraries in any way, but they were um, for children's books and they were extremely attractive and very, very cool. And so I got a lot of inspiration from that. Um, you know, book displays themselves, where people hang, um, ways to hang prints to make space make more sense. And those all come from getting um, visual ideas from reading design blogs. So I would certainly encourage people to step outside of the library world is to get ideas for things like that. Another way um, that I get ideas is by visiting stores that I think work well. You know, the um, Apple Store, obviously, everybody loves to go into because it makes sense. It's clean. You clearly know where to go. The people who work there are pretty e easy to find. And there's not a lot of other stuff going on other than what you're there for. Um, Target is the master of sucking you in and spitting you out several hundred dollars poorer and an hour later and you're not really sure what happened and that's because they've basically drawn you through the store in a weird mazy like way that made you pick up a whole bunch of stuff that you didn't want because it's um, merchandised so well and then um, spitting you back out as quickly as possible before you realize hey wait a minute I don't have $300 to buy all this random plates and vases and things like that. 